best thought experiment is to just let go of like damn good cup of cup. <laughs> yeah. Like, like, just let that shit go. You're not gonna yeah, get that yeah, shit. Yeah. yeah. No, especially not yeah. here. Motherfucking goddamn orange peel beef. <laughs> Right, everybody. It's one fucking hour time. I am Evan Husney. Of course, this is the show where we talk about one goddamn movie, and we have just one fucking hour to do it. And oh. uh, yeah, and to my left, we have. I have a new name for you, actually, tonight. I forgot about this. Oh. Uh, to my left, we got Big T Tom Fitzgerald over on the left. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I like uh, I like what you're doing there. Nice one. <laughs> that might be my uh, stage name. Yeah, <laughs> Tom Fitzgerald. I love it. Let's rock. Let's rock. Let's rock. Woo. All right, awesome. Uh, and all the way on the right, uh, we have uh, Mr. Marcus Herring. Welcome back, Marcus. How's it going? What's up, everybody? Uh, excited about tonight's episode. That's all I'm going to say. Hell yeah. Yeah, this is going to be insane and impossible, but also fun at the same time. Um, and long and coming. Yes, mm-hmm. very. Right. Yes. 100 percent i mean the fact that we haven't done all of david lynch's movies at this point is insane <laughs> but um, we're getting there <laughs> we're, we, <laughs> we're yeah. slowly getting there and uh all right our special guest of course returning champion from last week's episode which was martin scorsese's cape fear mm-hmm. we have returning back to the show miss Remy bennett Remy, how's it going welcome back great i'm very excited about this episode and thank you guys for inviting me back Oh, of course. Trauma specialist. Yeah. Trauma specialist, all right. exactly. Uh, all right. This all right. is I the mean, quintessential. I mean, this, I mean, this is, is a ba- this is back-to-back. You know? I know. I know. <laughs> back-to-back Ramey. Like, and yeah. uh, I mean, this movie is just about as traumatic and horrific as one can get. Uh, so just going to throw it up there. There's a million trigger warnings, uh, you know, for everything in this movie. Sure. So, you know, be yeah, forewarned if you've not seen this movie and you don't know what you're in store for. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Be forewarned. Um, all right. So what are we talking about? What is the movie? Of course, we are talking about for episode 107 of the show, David Lynch's Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me from 1992, which, of course, is part of our new summer series that we are doing here on the show. One fucking summer where we are discussing <laughs> one film from each year of the 90s over the course of of the weeks here, the summer of this year. So this is the 1992 entry, of course, as mentioned last week was Cape Fear. And at the stay tuned for the end of this show, because we'll tell you what we're going to do for 1993, which I'm very excited mm-hmm. about. So, but um, before we get into it, just a quick shout out to the one fucking hour Patreon. Patreon.com slash one fucking hour is where you can sign up for just five bucks a month get instant access to all of our bonus episodes and audio commentary tracks, including one we did, guys, I think last year, we did a full audio commentary track to Blue Fucking Velvet, man. So that's right. if you want to hear us talk frame by frame uh, over that film, that's the only place you can hear that. And there's also sync details on how to sync it up with the movie and all that jazz up there. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so it's just five bucks a month. If you're watching us on YouTube and you want to keep all your bonus apps on YouTube, you can, of course, scroll underneath this video, click the join button and become a moment of the channel. Same price, same perks, same bullshit. Uh, and uh, I think without further... Oh, I just wanted to mention one more thing. Shit, hold on. This is very important because our next bonus episode is going to come out, right, guys? And I want to just tell the people what it is that we're doing because it's pretty special for the next bonus. Okay, I already hold forgot, on. but okay. Oh, I do. <laughs> oh, yes. All right. <laughs> All right. So for the next bonus episode, which will only be available on the Patreon and or if you're a moment of the YouTube channel, we are going to do something a little different, which is we oh, yeah. are all four of us are going to get together and we are going to play, you know, because it's 90s. This is our one fucking summer 90s. Series. Yeah, we better do something 90s, right? How about we all play the blockbuster board game, <laughs> the party game together? Dude. So, so good. We're did gonna, you have that or did you just pick it up? I actually, this is the second copy I've ever purchased oh, of this. So nice. Um, first Shovel. one is MIA. So uh, we're, we're going to get together, split off into teams and play the blockbuster party game. So if you want to watch <laughs> to see who's going to win that championship, you're going to have to tune in on the Patreon or become a moment. Uh, that's a lot of f- fuck. We should stream that live maybe for the Patreon. That could be fun. Oh yeah. yeah that could no. be pretty fun. So, um, yeah. 
Anyway, it's the only way to do that. I'm sure we're going to do that here in the next week or so. So stay tuned for any info info on that. But all right, guys, should we get into the app? Should we do this thing once and for all? Oh, God. Okay. Okay. Can I, I want to start maybe doing this little brief thing. Like, okay. It's every year, right? So this is 1992. Yeah. And, uh, you know, there was a lot of euphoria in the streets when uh, Bush is out, Clinton's in. Oh, 92. right. 92. Okay. Wow. Uh, the Chronic came out. Mm. Snoop mm. and Dre took over <laughs> hip hop <laughs> in, yes. in the LBC. <laughs> um, Nirvana is going strong, right? They yep. started late 91, right? But that's sure. like peak Nirvana, right? Sure. So this is a kind of a big '90s year, isn't yeah. it? You say, yeah, yeah. yeah. Definitely. This right. is big. This is a transformative year, some would say, for the right. '90s. So, um, and of course, we pick this very obtuse <laughs> film to True. talk about. That everyone hated <laughs> that a lot of people oh didn't like when it came out. Everyone hated this. Trust me, I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And the, the critics were wrong. I'm just gonna say. <laughs> oh, okay. Sure. Yeah. Everyone was wrong. <laughs> Everyone was wrong, and we're going to get into that. Um, but shall we? Shall we go? And any other pre preamble words? Anybody wants I'm good. to get? Nineteen ninety two. Let's go. Everybody good? Let's do. Okay. Yeah. Let's do. Okay. The here comes the clock. Okay, and boom. All right. As customary here on the show, um, I'm just going to read a quick synopsis. This is, of course, is taken from the Criterion release of the film, which is a great edition of this movie. If you're looking to pick it up. Um, All right, so Twin Peaks Fire Walk with me. Here we go. In the town of Twin Peaks, everybody has their secrets, but no one more than Laura Palmer. In this prequel to his groundbreaking 1990s television series, David Lynch resurrects the teenager found wrapped in plastic at the beginning of the show, following her through the last week of her life and teasing out the enigmas that surround her murder. Homecoming queen by day and drug-addicted thrill-seeker by night, Laura leads a double life that pulls her deeper and deeper into horror as she pieces together the identity of the assailant who has been terrorizing her for years. Nightmarish in its vision of an innocent torn apart by unfathomable forces, Twin Peaks Fire Walk With Me is nevertheless one of Lynch's most humane films, aching with compassion for its tortured heroine, a character as enthralling in life as she was in death. So there you go. Uh, Twin Peaks Fire Walk with me. Now, what I want to start with here is just literally the first image that you see uh, in the film. Uh, of course, there's the opening, beautiful opening titles uh, with the beautiful um, Angelo Badalamente uh, song that's playing in the beginning. Uh, but then we sort of notice that the background is TV static. And then uh, what happens is this very abrupt smashing of the television set. And to me, uh, to, to, to sort of look at that, it, that is really a metaphor, I think, for uh, mm-hmm. what David Lynch is going to do straight off the bat. He is going to subvert your expectations of what you think this movie is going to be. This is not just an IP cash in, like, let's just do a movie, uh, you know, version of Twin Peaks. No, he's obviously going to do it in his own way. And, you know, Twin Peaks was this huge success uh, as a television series, a network television, you know, back when 30, 40 million people were watching these shows a night and uh, had a very successful first season, didn't quite maintain it into the second season. Mm -mm. And, uh, of course, this movie comes out following that and um, people were expecting one thing and they did not get it. And I think this image of him smashing the television set was sort of, you know, his way of sort of maybe reclaiming the show and reclaiming Twin Peaks uh, uh, in a lot of ways because it had got it, it, it had gone adrift from him. You know, there were other directors, other creatives involved in the TV series. And so I think that's yeah. very emblematic of what you're seeing right off the bat. And, and I think it was a victim of success. I mean, we can't emphasize enough. This was a huge cultural mm, phenomenon huge. for one year. One fucking season, right? Okay. Yeah. And and then like I remember because I was present for all of this mm-hmm. completely. Yeah. And like the book of the, the Twin Peaks was flying off the shelves. Mm-hmm. Everyone would talk about it. people wouldn't go to parties because it was airing, mm. kind of thing. That's and um, but then I remember the second season. I was like, hey man, second season, everybody's excited. And it's just like I don't care. And it's like mm-hmm. there's UFOs or something. Get me out of here. Mm-hmm. And it was died. And then a year later, this movie comes out. 
And I remember um, there's a, there was a flyer campaign in my neighborhood in San Francisco, and it was desperately trying to make it seem cool still to like be into Twin Peaks. And it was like, get like a, a damn good cup of coffee and come to the midnight screening of Twin Peaks. And I was, and then I saw it, and I was like, oh, Agent Cooper's not even in this. Like, it's not <laughs> damn good, not the na- damn good cup of coffee movie. No. And that must have been one of those like big cultural moments of like, um, not a bait and switch. I mean, he wasn't trying to do something mm-hmm, like, but it was. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, uh, totally deflating and disappointing because none of the quirks and uh, a lot of the characters and agent Cooper specifically is not in the, f- in this film. So it was, um, it really had no chance in hell, you know, right. against the tide. Right. And, and that's why for me, I mentioned it last week when we were talking about teasing up this episode it's just, I've always, even though I'm a fan of the TV series, I go back and watch it every once in a while and can still appreciate it. For me, I like to watch this movie um, at per, almost closing my eyes, not closing my eyes, but like pretending that the TV series never existed. And just for one minute thinking, wow, here is this really bold, really upsetting, really dark, hard art film that comes out of nowhere, just about a troubled teenager and just about the worst possible thing that one person could do to another. And here is this really dark, insane movie. And I love thinking about it that way because it's not to take away from the series. It's just, I think, what part of the reasons the movie wasn't successful out of the gate is it had a lot of the baggage and expectation from the TV sure. series. And that's just sort of what I'm saying is... It's just I mean, a thought experiment but for, you're right. for yourself to maybe not have right. all come in with any baggage or try right. to reduce it. Right. And and then you'll just appreciate it more on its own terms, which I think is right. The film deserves that. Yeah, right. Exactly. So anything on that, guys, bef- uh, Ramey, Marcus, before we uh, dive into the film itself? I find it really hard to separate from the <clears throat> that's interesting thought experiment. I find it really hard to separate from the show um, just because I feel like it was designed to be connected to it. And then there was, you know, the plan, you know, we'll talk about this too. It was there's some planned sequels involving some of the characters. And then, you know, it, it might've been at one point in my life, I could divorce it from the show. I'm a big peaker. And I used to always tell people like, watch season one, watch oh, yeah. season two, then watch the show. Don't yeah. watch the show first. Watch yeah. the, watch well, the yeah. pilot last, you know, cause the pilot gives away who Bob mm-hmm. is all that stuff. You know, I would I was always kind of walk people through like what I thought was the prescribed thing. So I had some strong opinions about this, show but maybe even back then i could separate this but now it's even harder because there's this whole season unwieldy season three right. to have to deal with too that right is woven into this story it uses some of the deleted scenes it uses footage from wait, the to be, film. Wait, to be clear deleted scenes from twin peaks fire walk with me yeah deleted scenes from fire walk with me are oh, in shit. the tv show uh so you have season the return three tv yeah. show yeah, yeah. The return. and then maybe even i think there's even some shots from fire walk with me just straight up reused in the show right, you know? right. so oh, shit. uh so it's it's even harder like for me to like separate you know okay i think yeah. that is interesting you know thought experiment like what if this was just a movie about laura palmer right. you know and there was none of that it was like lost just, highway like yeah fire walk with me yeah, yeah. yeah. i mean yeah. i think there's something really cool though in terms of the the idea that lynch is always working on these multi-dimensional metaphysical levels right it's like three women right like when you watch three women they're all intersecting Mm -hmm. so in 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 another meta kind of way it's like twin peaks yes the show is this bizarre artifice (laughs) dream yeah and this is the dark heart Yes. Of the yeah. reality right. and the pain, and so they're both. We're be- actually living in the Lynch world. Yeah, and they come can, each other. We can right. watch the two of them together. And, yeah. and season see. three is sort of like you're outside of in our oh, world, yeah. watching. Twin oh yeah. In yeah. Think like about it. Decades I mean, yeah, later, yeah, kind of, and it's yeah. really interesting because it subverts our nostalgia yes. and our desire for comfort, yes. and it totally yes. strips away our ability to find comfort. Right. And then it yeah. fucking like guts you. Uh, at the bottom end. line, <laughs> the best thought experiment is to just let go of like damn good cup of cup. <laughs> yeah, like, like, just let that shit go. <laughs> You're not gonna yeah, get that yeah, shit. Yeah. yeah, no, especially not yeah. here. So that's a good segue um, mm-hmm, into mm-hmm. just talking about the movie because, as I mentioned, smashing of the television set sets the tone for this movie, <clears throat> which launches us into, I mean, again, like as you were saying, there's no Dale Cooper f- for 30 minutes, and he's only in it for about five altogether, if that. And you're launched into two other detectives as they're investigating, of course, the murder of a different person, Teresa Banks, that's mentioned loosely in the show. 
But you're getting these vignettes, okay? And uh, we could spend all day on these because some of them are fucking very hilarious and memorable, but it sets the tone in a very odd way. One of the ones that 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 flies by right in the beginning that always caught my attention, and I and I'm sure maybe there's more of a story to this, maybe there isn't, but it's just one of those mm. great non Lynch non sequiturs that only he can really pull off, which is r- right away when you're introduced to I think the two detectives or at least one of them, uh, the uh, uh, the Chris Isaac character, you're mm. seeing him um, arresting a bus driver. Uh, mm. And they're screaming <laughs> children pounding on the bus windows right. while yeah. what looks like prostitutes are also uh, present right. at the scene. I love it. And, love and you're sort of left of being like, what is going on here? No it's backstory. Todd Solondz or something. Yes, yeah. totally. It's, it's and the amazing. kids are just like crying and banging yeah. on the windows. Great. And, and they just like, and he, but he makes it like this abstract art piece pattern totally. of like children's faces pounding. Yeah, like yes. relentlessly, but consistently yeah. across every window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's awesome. like beautiful. Yeah, it's amazing. great. But it's good. It's as it's good as any Lynch ever. This film. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> and that's a moment. <clears throat> yeah, and so then mm-hmm. we learn that basically this case, is, and of course, and David Lynch himself appears in the first five minutes. You know, mm-hmm. um, uh, of course, as one of the FBI heads, and uh, we learn that this case is a Blue Rose case. Uh, mm-hmm. Where we see another very odd set piece with an individual, and I, I'm sure Tom loves her. the. <laughs> I cannot stand her. The mind. Where is the hair, fast right? forward button? Anyway, <laughs> I go knew ahead. that. Go ahead. Go ahead. I knew that, but that you know. So then we're trying to get footing into this movie, right? Mm-hmm. It, again, it's 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 setting a weird tone here. And we're sort of getting into, you know, sheriff's departments as they're investigating this murder. Uh, One of the things I can say about these scenes uh, at the sheriff's office and at the the diner that comes up is it's again, it's it's some of uh, Lynch's best towny casting, you know, where he's finding these uh, real cut from real life people that he's sticking into the film with no acting experience. And you can tell they've never been on camera before. Are you talking about that little girl that got murdered? And it's amazing. It's like you get this kind of waiting for Guffman sort of community theater uh, vibe. <laughs> performance, uh, yeah. Performance. Or like uh, Vernon, Florida, that documentary. Yes. Oh. Errol, yeah. Errol Morris. <laughs> that kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so we're getting these set pieces. The movie's kind of droning on a bit. Um, and we get to this autopsy scene. And that's, to me, where the movie is starting to form into, okay, we're invested mm-hmm. in where this is going. There's a little bit of a plot forming, and we find the letter T in the fingernail, which is very, you know, that's hard to watch, but it's hard to watch. But it's it's captivating, you know, as you're seeing, you know, Kiefer Sutherland, Chris Isaac, um, and then we start to learn. Okay, we're going to the diner, as I mentioned before, trying to find out who this person was. But then we get to the trailer park, guys, and mm. um, this to me is, and I think we'd all agree, is where. I mean, we love this movie, but this is where this this movie really kind of coalesces in a lot of ways because he really yeah. is able to create in in such a way only Lynch can just this super nightmare uh, set piece with something so simple as a trailer park. You know, old mm-hmm. people yeah. mil- wandering about. <laughs> Where's my goddamn hot water? Uh, no, terrifying. It's kind of strobic, kind of. Totally, totally. The woman, like the yeah. strange eye, just the oh. raw, like horrifying middle of nowhere America. But like, I've always said it. It's I think he builds the best, most subtle atmosphere he's ever done in in yeah. those scenes. Like the lighting, yeah. mm-hmm. mixed with the lighting of the, the, the like after the golden hour, you know, whatever the shot is and, and the, the sunset, and uh, yeah, and just like the subtle. It's a great Harry Dean Stanton performance, you uh-huh. know. Mm-hmm. Everything's exactly like she left it. I haven't touched a goddamn thing. God. Mm-hmm. Cup of good morning, America. You yeah. know what? She- and just the tone of it all, and it's paced so well, and it's very quiet, but you feel like dread. Dread. And this woman is like hurt, oh. like, like one out of the room. The sound design and yeah, yes, oh, it's just it's, so foreboding. There is weird and, music too. Mixing yeah, the sound. music. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's about as really as good as he gets in my opinion ever. Mm-hmm. You know. And yeah. I think um, that that feel like we talked about this in the Mulholland Drive episode, just like the way that Lynch can like imbue empty spaces like that yes. where like there's nothing there but yeah. there's a mixture of like just this tra- traumatic like energy um mm-hmm. yeah it just shows, very hard to do it just shows like with such you know limited means uh, you know just with these simple simple tools of cinema 
he can create a set piece kind of out of nothing that is so foreboding, you know, like something that's just, you know, old people in a trailer park. He's able to make it seem like this, like, you know, 2000 pound nightmare, you know, yeah. um, and it's amazing. Yeah. And you're seeing on the on the edge of hell. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Oh, yeah. She can't yeah. see it quite or hear it quite. You know, yeah. but it's there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And this is where the journey is forming. We're seeing the this the amazing um, iconography of the that green ring underneath the trailer park. <laughs> Um, and this, and then it, 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 it's the transition is great out of this moment. It's just a, a quick freeze frame and a fade from the detective oh. finding the ring. Mm -hmm. I fucking love that. It gives me chills. Yeah, it's amazing. I know. Totally. Mm -hmm. Amazing, amazing touch. And there's little touches like that. Um, <clears throat> so now, uh, just to you know, breeze through this. I know <clears throat> you're going to want to talk about this. Because again, it's you know something we should say, Marcus. You were saying earlier. I mean, this this movie before we started recording, this movie, you know, they shot like five, like there's like a five hour cut of this movie, I guess, with all of the, you know, deleted scenes. Right. If you added them all in, and there's yeah, a lot. yeah, <clears throat> someone's taken all the. Um, well, I think it was one of the DVD releases mm -hmm. took all of the, uh, yeah. you know, deleted scenes and strung them out, and you can watch them, and it's pretty cool because it's like color corrected. It's beautiful. It looks as yeah. pretty as this movie. Like you said, this movie shot beautifully. Like all the yeah. mountains with the um, fog on them oh. and stuff behind mm -hmm. people, and the film grain is like really, you know, uh, mm -hmm. small in this. It's that kind of like really beautiful. Uh, low grain '90s kind of film, yeah. uh, but uh, yeah, so they got them all strung out. It's beautiful to watch. Funny, funny note uh, though is we had this when at the theater. We did we shed this we shed firewalk. With me. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> amazing on the big screen. If you ever get the opportunity to see it, yes. the film yeah. that is it's insane. Special. Especially the ending, of course. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, so there was, we had a screener of <laughs> the string out like on like our like. You know, our yeah. theater. It's called the missing pieces. Yeah. Right. yeah, but it was just labeled. <laughs> it's like fire walk with me or something. So right, exactly. Our friend Taylor, a friend of the show, Shout you know, out. she yep. was on our um, uh, Welcome to the Dollhouse episode. Yep. So we sent it to her to watch. She'd never seen uh, fire walk with me before. And she <laughs> she thought it was. So she like the next day, she's like, she's a uh, she's like, God, that movie is just so weird. Like, yeah, it is so <laughs> experimental. Started talking yeah. like how there's like yeah, 10 like, minutes of like. Um, no, like the first 20 minutes is just people like practicing. Practicing like axe throwing, like what? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, really? Is that how it starts? Like, yeah, whoa. right. Yeah, right. It, really, it took Might us a while well. to figure out what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. we're like, yeah. really? I don't remember that yeah. part. And, yeah. Yeah. So, so the reason that was the, weird. The, the reason I, 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 well, you also mentioned seeing this in the theater. I, I, I concur. Mm -hmm. It's, it's really amazing. Yeah, it's and incredible. Yeah. yeah. Rumor has it that when when the film was released in theaters, David Lynch sent like notes to all the projectionists, basically right. with uh, instructions, you know, to set the volume at a certain amount. But he lied to them because uh, in like the third reel of the film, he actually mixed it like twice as loud. So they thought <laughs> they were setting it at the right setting, but then as the movie <laughs> gradually gets louder as it goes on, so it's amazing to see it in theater. Um, but the reason I brought up the deleted scenes is because mm -hmm. you do get these fragments of moments. In this movie, the first 30 minutes sort of feels like this, where it's almost like there's not a lot of pieces that are coalescing quite yet. And one of the moments that I know you're probably itching to talk about, Tom, is the David Bowie cameo, which happens. Oh, come no. on. No, no, go, <laughs> have fun, guys. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make some coffee. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, no. no. <laughs> You know about your David Bowie. He wasn't, you know what? He wasn't happy with that either. He said he wasn't. Oh really? He was. Yeah. yeah oh, he was like, two, well, and why did he do it? He yeah. was like, oh, I did, they crammed it in. It was really rushed. Uh, I feel really yeah. embarrassed about it. So. Oh. It's and I so don't do bad. a good Southern accent. I'm not going to talk about Judy. In fact, we're not going to talk about Judy at all. We're going to keep her out of it. Gordon. They yeah, either. it's just like you see him, and it's cringe, and like. Rockstar cameo. It's very distracting. It takes you out of the atmosphere of what we were just talking about, yes. which is the incredible trailer park scene. Yes. Right. And it always feels yes. like, because he also had Marilyn Manson in Lost Highway. And it's like, Shut I up. hate that thing where it's like, I'm a cool rock star. And it's like, I want to be in the new Lynch. The yeah. <laughs> like, can, like, give me David's number. And it's yeah. like, get out of here. <laughs> yeah. Like, you make it right. bad. Like, I think cameos ruin everything. Portlandia's yeah. first season was okay, and then everybody and their mom is doing a cameo. Right. Yeah, so yeah. Get yeah. the fuck out of here. Yeah. Yeah. So, exactly. It takes yeah, we like the, the We like the nobody actors. You yeah. Know, like you see the trailer you. park people. Oh, wait, yeah. but exactly. also... Oh, sorry, Marcus. Oh, it doesn't hurt. Oh, it doesn't help that it's the most confusing moment in the whole movie, too. You know, yeah. when Bowie shows up and he's on the, he's on the camera and he's not on the camera. You have to have a fucking degree 
in Twin Peaks to know what's happening in that scene, even now, you know? I, like, I, I think... Sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. I, I, just, no. I think part of you it... You love like, the even, scene. Is that what you're saying? No. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> but I, I do remember like as a kid when I first watched it because I watched the movie like right when it came out mm. that like I didn't care that I didn't know yeah. I just knew that mm-hmm. like I was supposed to be incredibly disoriented yeah. Yeah. by something that was happening in the in the frequencies with Cooper right. and that right. we, and that yeah. it was like something really there's fucking, nothing to really figure out yeah well, I, I will say but this. I didn't like uh, the scene but yeah. yeah I will say this all that part has some juicy liminal space, like proto appreciation <laughs> yeah. of liminal space. Yes. Yeah. I mean, everybody, you know, he's like OG liminal space and there's killer yeah. uh, uh, MS and uh, LS in that. Uh, part. Yeah. <laughs> well, it, it does. It transitions to that convenience store scene too. Yes. You know? So it's yes. like, there's a lot happening in that moment. With and that is cool. Like, like I, uh, I do think the convenience store scene is cool. Doesn't it go like, back to the trailer park though from there? Am yeah. I wrong? Let's rock. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Goes, well, Cooper for, goes. Cooper goes yeah. there looking yeah. for Agent. Right. For the, so it's kind of like detective. um, it's a little bit that you'll get, we'll get introduced to that later, like in more Black Lodge stuff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like you were saying, Marcus, when the return happens, and I was saying earlier, like his intention was to do a trilogy where this was kind of like a Black Lodge trilogy. Mm. So this was kind of the intro right. to how these agents get stuck in the Black Lodge, and then yeah. We're kind of intro to this world that they right. all live in above the convenience store. So possibly store. the second of the three yeah. films would be all about the agents and all this crazy trauma they're going through. Yeah, right? exactly. And then and meeting space. the characters because okay. they used to live, the real people who are the spirit manifestations of like evil and trauma, they used to live above a convenience store. Right. And then this is the dream world kind right. of version of that. Right, right. I think that they're like, they're spirits, you know, that are crossing over into our dimension. And for then sure. the convenience store is like kind of like another holding place, like the Black Lodge. Yeah, you know? for sure. And they're kind of like, you know, this is sort of like not just my theory, but lots of people talk about this. But, you know, it's like that they are talking about becoming manifest like on this earth, you know? Yeah. Because mm-hmm. yeah. there's they're saying like um, some of the dialogue in that scene, you know, that just seems like random dialogue. You know, if you look at it in the script, it, it kind of makes sense, actually. Uh, he's like, this is a Formica table. You yes. Know? Yeah, so, yeah, 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 yeah. It's like, you know, uh, they're basically saying like uh, they're kind of marveling at how they are able to become like real in our world. You know, like Mrs. Tremont has a line in the screenplay that got cut out that she says, why not be composed of materials and combinations of atoms? You know, Mm -hmm. and they're like kind of they, they are basically saying like we are if you look at the dialogue when you watch it you can you can piece it together they're basically going like we are coming alive in this real world what should we do you know mm-hmm. yeah it's like and, the metaphysical uh, changing into the physical yeah world. oh and it's and, sort of like how a, a, a baby is learning how to talk it's like mm-hmm. i now have the <laughs> mouth and i make sounds yeah that, right, that's crazy. right yeah there's they're like a passing line, like, into the becoming something else kind of yeah that's there's like a line in this i think it's in the screenplay where like the, even the the woodsman guy the lumberjack guy he says like but no bones you know yeah, and they're like, and then wow. the, the the Lynch kid, Austin Lynch, is like, fell a victim. Fell he's, a victim. Telling, he's telling Bob what to do, you know. And then if you look at the Formica table too, this is so weird. There's a there's a circle cut out of it, which it, 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 like this is a green Formica table, you know. The, the ring is like cut out of the Formica table. Oh, oh right, oh, it's yeah. like, there's, oh, there's, oh, oh there's in the stuff. episode now, dude. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, feel like, I feel like. The yeah. guys, it's a piece like, of the four mic table, the ring. Yeah, yeah. it's sort of, it's so interesting because it's like when you kind of can piece together what's going on with like the spirits, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. But it's like I, my vision, of, my idea of Twin Peaks has always been that like Mark Frost and Ingalls, you know, who wrote this, they liked all the spirits and the demons and like the tulpas and all that stuff that they, that is kind of layered in. They were interested in all that stuff, mm-hmm. but then and then Lynch's role is to kind of like present it in a way that's not silly or kind of. He does all this stuff to kind of, it's still telling that story, but it's like obfuscated, you know, and it's like presented in a compelling way. Yeah. Instead of being like, we're spirits from another world. Or, you know, if it was a comic book movie or something, they would. Right. Come He's out coming at it sideways. But like, it's almost got all these yeah. elements of fantasy stories with like demons coming to earth to kill you and stuff. But it's like presented in this like art film kind of way. It's very weird. Anyway, yeah. I just like that. Yeah. Let's right. to be interested. In, like, I never picked of, up on any of that. Yeah. You know? Well, and something about them too, is that like in each of his films, Lost Highway, Mulholland Drive, like we have this like unspeakable 
act of like abhorrent violence, right? This yeah. like, transgression, like mm-hmm. Diane and, and murdering someone, her committing suicide. Mm-hmm. You have the and murder, even eraser her head. Involved. Yeah, like, and infanticide. so infanticide. Right, exactly. And like, I think what he's exploring in such a big way is like, we have this headline almost, right? This end result of this Mm. horrific tragedy. And what are like the subterranean dark forces and moments that lead to that, that sometimes are way in our subconscious. And then he kind of... I don't even have that's to say Mulholland it works, Drive, but, and that's Lost yeah. Highway. Yeah, no, he and, then and, makes and it manifest. Suicide is Mulholland Drive. Right, yeah. he makes it manifest. He makes all those dark, like incantations. Sorry, Evan. That's all right. I gotta just because we said let's not okay, spend let's thirty go. minutes let's on go. the first thirty minutes, and okay, here we are. Let's go. All right, so <laughs> gotta keep this thirty-one minutes now. Yeah, so that's not bad. <laughs> no. I just want to keep it. Film. I just want to keep it moving. You know, we only got thirty-six yes. minutes left. All right, yes. so. Um, let's get to so so now. Of course, as we were saying after the David Bowie scene, we get back to the trailer park. Agent Cooper now is investigating um, where the other agent has disappeared. It's a very, it's an awesome other bookend to this scene, of course, amazing. And that's where you see the Let's Rock written with lipstick on the windshield. Great image. And mm-hmm. then here we are, man. Mm-hmm. We're getting right now back into Twin Peaks. It's a year later, and it, we're now theme seeing, song is heard. Oh, theme feels song great is heard. When they drop Incredible. That theme song, it feels you know? so good. Yeah, it's almost like the so uh, good. you know Star Wars Episode One uh, fan base yeah. going. <sighs> You know, at the beginning it's that, of uh, it's that the, same sort uh, of delayed heart. gratification that he does in season three it, too, where he doesn't like introduce Cooper until like the last <laughs> episode, basically, definitely. and you yeah. feel good. You're like, ah, yeah. oh, yeah. thank yeah. you. We needed yeah. that. Yeah, it's so, like a yeah. deep comfort and like a sadness at the same time. It's amazing. Yeah, yeah. and and um, what's so great about this is you know Laura's not really that present in the series, and so this is a chance uh, mm-hmm. you know for everyone I think to see her as a full real person. Um, and even if you didn't see the series, you get a very well-rounded uh, sort of look at who this girl is. You're seeing all the different sides from her, um, of her in these early scenes. You're seeing her, you know, uh, with Bobby and how she behaves with Bobby. Um, I love a, that. Talk. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I lo- go ahead. yeah. I did because I think in the in the series, what's interesting about the series with her is that it's all people's projections onto her yes onto what their desires and their feelings and their attachments are right but we don't actually know who the real laura is right we're just seeing yeah what these projections are yeah. and i think it's like seeing her in the flesh and kind of the fluctuating dimensions to her personality and the way that she almost shapeshifts it's it is almost like a dissociative identity thing yeah. and we we realize later why it's the you know intense mm-hmm sexual trauma the PTSD yeah. PTSD Coping. for yeah. sure and then what with yep. Bobby I just love the moment where she's like she goes from like disdain and almost mean mm-hmm. to the like charm the Marilyn Monroe sexy and then back to the giggle it's like you see the whole yep. spectrum yeah. of that yep. kind of manipulation in those shades of we, her yep and we putting see her masks her. on yep. right oh, and, yeah. and, and, exactly. and 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 we see her doing drugs in the bathroom stall we see her with James, uh, where she, you know, she can't show James the dark side. That is Laura Palmer. And shout out to Cheryl Lee. I mean, so oh. much has been said about yeah. this performance, especially looking at it from, you know, today, looking back at this unbelievable performance. And I mean, dude, it's fucking hard uh, for any actress to sell a sequence like, you know, turkeys are stupid you know, gobble, gobble. I mean, to be able to sell that sort of dialogue with these sort of emotional intensity that she does, I mean, yeah, shout out. Yeah. And, and yeah. Ramey, you were saying that, like, did you have written down some of the things people said about Cheryl's performance in this movie as Laura Palmer? I oh, mean, God, I have it written down somewhere, but I have to find it. <laughs> All right, find well, it, because it's not mom, kind, I presume. Um, no, 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 the, no. no, oh, no um, what people are saying nowadays. I mean, this uh, movie Grace, is... Grace, like, let me see, let me see if Grace, I can find Grace it. Zabrisk, um, you know, who obviously plays Laura Palmer's mother in this film a lot of people you know like we were saying this movie was pretty maligned when it came out but i think there's a lot of there's been a big reevaluation of this movie especially because of her yeah because of her performance and and she uh, said i I can tell you now (laughs) she said um she she gave everything she had yes she gave everything she had she gave more than she could afford to give and she spent years coming back from it Mm-hmm, so yeah. I mean you can see it like it's it's an it's almost like transcendent it's like I don't even look at it like an actor performing like it's like a crazy yeah. conjuring or something you know yeah. yeah where where she is going in this movie and where 
you know, the places she goes in, in, in her performance for this movie feel very lived in and feel very real that she's resonating or she's resonating with, you know, what's happening to this character, which as we mentioned earlier, is some of the darkest shit one person can endure. Yeah. Marcus, sorry. It's too bad that she didn't, you know, have a career, a big career after this, you know, yeah, like, I know that the movie was such a bomb, you know, bomb so that she was kind of like poisoned, I guess, or just didn't jumpstart her career. Right, but it's yeah. too bad. I mean, I think for me, I think it's that like, you know, if you're a Twin Peaks fan, you love Laura Palmer and the idea of her and you'll take as much Laura Palmer and they don't give you very much in the show beyond, you know, her cousin, her identical right. cousin <laughs> right. and, uh, yeah, yeah. and uh, the photo, you know, the great prom photo. But right. um, so you'll take as much mm. as you can get. So, I, you know, seeing her in this movie, I think I think that's part of the revaluation is just like it's so such a rare treat to have. Cheryl Lee in your life, you know, she's, great. One of those times you she's really, so. really remarkable. And so then uh, we we're, we're introduced to Moira Kelly, who plays mm. uh, Donna, uh, her best friend, obviously recast in this movie from the series. Uh, Laura you guys are team Moira, right? I love Moira. I'm Moira I'm Moira all the way. I've always <laughs> yeah, loved I her. Would agree. I, Marcus, I've always, what do you think? I've always loved her just real quick. I've always loved her in, yeah. in, in, you know, other movies of the nineties and everything. But to me, it's like, Laura Flynn Boyle was sort of the casting of like, you know, someone who's like 25 in high school, whereas mm. Moira Kelly feels really like, you know, she feels more innocent, you know, and mm. she feels less. Yes. She, she doesn't feel as somebody who, uh, you know, like which we'll get to the, the, the scene later on at the Roadhouse. It feels even yes. like seeing if that was Laura Flynn Boyle, it wouldn't have as much impact. Yeah, uh, yeah it was, she's impact. got more sultry kind uh, of. Yeah, yeah yes. the revelation. Yeah, yeah. like innocence sullied. Uh, yeah. is, m- feels better with the more uh, uh, persona right. in the yeah, way she carries herself. Was it the actress who's supposed to play Shelley? Was supposed to originally be Donna or something? I think. Yeah. Um, yeah. Right. Weird. Yeah, huh? I, th- I think more. I think at the early when I back in the day, I was like I had a really hard time adjusting yeah. to Moira. But now I'm. Yeah, of course. It seems superior. like she's like such a perfect foil. Like we were saying to Laura, like, yeah. whereas like, and, and yeah. Lynch is doing that, obviously that whole Betty and Veronica thing. Mm-hmm. We also mm-hmm. talked about that in Mulholland Drive, like where right. he has those kind of 1950s comic book pinup archetypes of like the blonde yeah. and the brunette. Mm-hmm. And, yeah. and Laura mm-hmm. has the darkness and the secrets and the sexuality. And yeah. then Donna has this like, oh my God, she has this like this goodness that, yeah. that, that performance, that she like that actress radiates this yeah. beautiful yes. sense yes. of goodness. I just love her. Yeah. To bits. James and Donna and get so kind of annoying her in the, the middle of, it is, sorry. it is, yeah. Oh, sorry. I was just saying James and Donna get kind of annoying on the show, too. So it's nice to have something yeah. to like kind of refresh <laughs> sure. that. Sure, sure. You know, oh, so roll. <laughs> just to keep the train rolling here, there's also a great little scene, too. I love the way it's shot of the top down shot of both Donna mm. and Laura as they're lying on the chaise lounges and in, in, mm. in in Laura's yep. mom's house. I love that. And just kind of talking, talking. about uh, disappearing in the cosmos. Oh. Do you think that if you were falling in space... You would slow down after a while or go faster and faster. Faster and faster. I mean, yeah. That's... And just that like total 50s, 40s shot, like the, of like just that beautiful framing of the two of them. It is and Archie. Then very Archie. Her, it's mm. very Archie. And then like yeah. her just that close up and you see like, you can tell hell that she's Livian. Like suddenly that character comes into full relief of like what she's experiencing. Um, and so that I think that's like a just a beautiful way to kind of go into her like interior and, world and, and, and to see another side of her too. We were saying this is who she's with with all the boys, the various boys, yeah, drugs, true. and then mm-hmm. here's the comfort of her best friend. Yeah, um, and she's trying to let her in slowly into the world that she's really right. in, but of course she's still trying to pr- protect her, which we'll get to. But now, mm. man, this is man. Now let's get shit's about to get real because. There's a, of course, a moment where you know Laura goes up to her room after this, and she discovers that pages of her diary have been torn out, um, and this kind of a, a very panicked realization. Uh, then she flees and goes to uh, <laughs> a pretty odd character from the series, Harold, Harold who is the shut-in. Yeah. Uh, of course, yeah, what's the, up with Harold? <laughs> he's the agoraphobic, the agoraphobic. Uh, crush. That mm-hmm. uh, you know he that and 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 basically, but this is a very terrifying scene. Maybe one of the first truly terrifying yeah. scenes with Laura in this movie when she starts to relay to Harold um, that basically this man Bob has been having her since she was twelve years old, and then he gets really yeah. disturbed by this news. And of course, that's when we see that incredible flash of you know Laura with the black lipstick and the Ooh. yellow teeth and scary. <sighs> Me. 
Yeah, mm-hmm. it's like chills. It's it's yeah, it's it's pretty pretty scary. She runs out of the house. Harold gets really upset because he loves her. And what fought what follows is just kind of the the tone of what this movie has, which from this point forward, we're just going to get, I don't know, about every 5 minutes interstitial sections of just pure terror yeah. uh, where it's this just literal montage um, of yeah. just flashes of really terrifying shit and uh, unsettling um, sort of visuals that sort of lend into the interior well, blackness. It, Bob this. makes his yeah. Film, right? We're about to get to that. Yeah. I mean, can I mention something about yeah. mm-hmm. before the Herald scene? It's just yeah. like, you know, that yeah. character pops in. But, uh, you know, it seems like weird, like why showcase this guy? But then just remember that in the deleted mm. scenes, like the, almost every character from Twin Peaks, the you know, Laura, uh, uh, Lara Flynn Boyle's dad, like right. the yeah. major, they all had a scene. Of course. Right. So if they had yeah. been in this movie the way that he wanted it to be, I guess it would be, want it to be a five hour movie i don't know but mm-hmm. like yeah. if they'd all made it it would have a much different tone than been like shortcuts yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 <laughs> exactly <laughs> but it made sense with harold too because he was the one who was keeping a lot of her secrets like they had yes. this very special relationship yes and yeah. at one point he had her diary the diary and in that like right. the moment the moment's so scary when he says to her like Bob isn't real. And then her reaction of saying like, Bob is real. He's been having me. And it's that feeling of like, when you're telling a victim, like that never happened. Bob is real. He's been having me since I was 12. Like it's like that moment where like, it's almost like this rage of like, I know this has been happening. And then like, saying like he he wants to be me or he's going to kill me and so it's like that's also the first time that idea is introduced that like right. the way the violence and cycles of trauma get passed down where the victim then becomes the abuser right and mm-hmm. so like that's wow. like he's trying to take her over some, some and so ma- like just seeing her as yeah. like the demon yeah it's 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 Sorry. it's truly amazing yeah. that he's like a dynamic like that is so true you know that red that ring so true and there's so many of that that he's able to really feel makes it feel authentic as this movie goes on just other you know ways that this trauma gets passed down and how authentic it really is it's really amazing so again terrifying scene around the corner here where you know laura is you're supposed to be doing the meals on wheels thing she gets the creepy fucking painting from the old woman and and the little kid played by david lynch's son and the kid says to her you know he's under the fan now and he has the torn pages very foreboding the The fan is such an iconic image you know of course in the twin peaks universe uh, and that cuts to this very scary looking uh, exterior shot of the house, very Amityville shot of the house. And it's it's her going up the stairs. And uh, it's it's pure horror as she's open. And no one does this better than Lynch, man. Slowly peering around yeah. a corner. And it's like any other movie, they, they give you a fake out there. But no, he actually always yeah. over delivers yeah. on what's around the Oof. corner. It's scream like every behind uh, Winkies. Yeah, it's, it's, it, dude, it's the same shit. It's Winkies, and the same way where like the reveal is happening, you see her and you mm-hmm. can't see it yet, but yeah. you're just like it's, the dread is so mm-hmm, fucking mm-hmm. strong. It's awful. So Bob is there, I, and um, it's just it's and it's it's awful. It got, and the energy it? in the house, like I'd say, just yeah. really interesting in terms of like we're talking about like subverting the American dream, like that whole mm-hmm. idyllic house, which was you know beautiful tree line block, gorgeous house, and the way it's shot, he imbues it with this completely traumatic terror. You know, like even yeah. when she's walking through the living room with all the perfectly kind of quaff yeah. furniture, yeah. Yeah. and it's just this total oppressive well, it's, terror. It's, it's, it's everything's fine, everything's perfect, except one absolutely horrible Horrific. nightmare, ver, uh, like a uh, like image a detail. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's different. It's like everything else is fine, except yeah. like, er, and it's yeah. Bob's face. Oh. And now, yeah. Bob, shout out to Bob, right? He was a technician on the show. Yeah. He was a yeah. carpenter or something. I don't know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he I mean, sort of accidentally was in the shot, right? That's yeah, how they yeah, cast yeah. Him. That's how they cast wow. him. And I mean, he do, he <laughs> brings the goods, man. I mean, that scene, uh, which we'll get to, you know, where he creeps on the bed, like that's some real performance there. Oh, 
Um, very scary. Oh, yeah. I like how he's sort of badly hiding behind the dresser. That makes it scary. Yeah, you it does. I mean? Like he's like right. not hiding. Yeah. <laughs> not hidden yeah. at it's all, but it's like he's still very, trying to hide. It's so, very nightmarish. It's like a children's game kind of thing. <sighs> and the test. sound also of the t- tearing of the pages. I forgot. Gone off in a world filled with Lights start changing and their wires in the air. And the oh. Also, it just, yeah. it's uh, this so scary. Very, very scary. So, I'm so scary that the other spirits like are don't like him and like conspire against him type thing sure oh. yeah he's like too much he's freaky so mm-hmm. uh mm. laura then runs outside and she's hiding behind these bushes and then of course she sees her father leland palmer exiting the house and realizing now that you know it's her father that has been abusing bob her is, is her father bob yeah. is her father and that's very scary and uh and then again this is now when this movie starts pivoting into okay we're watching now an actual nightmare about you know yeah. <laughs> being abused incest by your own and father and incest b- yeah abuse, and yeah. and it's it just doesn't let up from there man and it gets to again talk about lynch constructing a scene with all these complicated dynamics but he's doing it in the lynch nightmare way which is the fingernails scene yep. which comes shortly thereafter here mm-hmm. all time terrifying scene and performances on display here where you at know, the dinner table at the, yeah, dinner, the table, dinner table yeah. laura mm. comes in she sits down and her dad's looking at her and obviously overcome with the spirit of bob and saying you know your hands are filthy you need to wash your hands and examining her fingernails mm. and Ramy, you mentioned that it sort of echoed uh, uh another great film uh, oh it Go reminds ahead. me so much of bigger than life Oh, the yeah. Nicholas Ray movie. If everyone, anyone wants to rewatch that, it's seeing, really oh, cool to watch them together. Um, mm. Cause in that movie, James Mason, it's the same thing like 1950s nuclear family, suburban yep. dream turned nightmare. And the yep. dad becomes insane basically yeah. mm-hmm. yep. and oppressive. And so it's almost like it's mm. pretty similar. It's very um, similar. Nicholas Ray. And shout out. Nicholas Ray. And, mm. and it, just like, this is also a moment I think where we really see the dynamic of the mother yes. and this classic mm-hmm. dynamic that exists every day in America, you know, of a household where the father's abusing the daughter and the mom or anyone. doesn't yeah. do anything and looks away yeah. and looks yeah. away, but is destroyed by it and is yeah. completely, you know, a shell the of a quiet, person. Quiet desperation. Yeah. yeah. And just what that triangular relationship looks like inside that home. Very dysfunctional. And just that, she's enabling it by not like yep. saying, completely. Hey, stop. Fuck you. Yeah. Well, she's Calling being police. drugged too, And right, she's also being drugged. And it's... Oh, yeah. That's what the white horse is. is like. we'll, the hallucination. We'll, we'll get to that. But yeah, yeah, we'll get to that. But it's just that that terror in, in like, there's something about like living in a house where parents are abusing children, the terror of the dining room table, like sitting down to yeah, dinner yeah. and just how like, the, I don't know, it's just, it's, it's sheer It's really why I just go back to... Monster. It's just, it's really why I go back to why I love this movie so much is again, because it's like, the feelings of uh, like the emotions and the terror and the trauma are so authentic and so real mm. feeling. And it's not yeah. just in the construction of these scenes via Lynch, but it's also the performances. And I can't even think of another filmmaker who can take uh, a set piece as, you know, uh, stylized and heightened and, uh, you know, high concept uh, in, in many ways. But, you know, and put that in front of you, but then make you feel all those emotions so authentically. Right. Well, That's to, not to, easy to, to do. To, like, because at the core, it's intimate feelings. Oh, yeah. And I think the, the companion for him that is most successful is Mulholland Drive. Yes. And the great tragedy in the last act of, of Mulholland Drive, it's not right. dissimilar. To, I understand what you're saying. It's like, yeah. like, if you do, like, just reduce everything in Dogma 95, Lynch, yeah. you are left with just these devastating, hurt people yeah. with a director with a lot of empathy. Yes. Like yeah, you were saying earlier that this yes. is a very humane uh, it is, depiction. Yeah. It is, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it is. And then we see another uh, layer of the dynamic, of course, following this is Leland's apology. He goes in, maybe mm. the spirit of Bob has left him temporarily, and he realizes, you know, he loves his daughter, and but he has some semblance of you know, something that's going on and he's lost yeah. and that's very tragic and feels very real. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it's like when happen. you look at it as, you know, Bob is just a symbol, right? Symbol, like in yeah. another, like he's also, it's Leland. The you personification know, Leland, of, of right, all he's that's bad. The personification of that trauma. So when you look at like a person who is inflicting that kind of pain yeah. and there are so many dynamics to that. Right. And, 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 and let me just put a button in this. This is why I like to divorce it from the series because 
because then you're not seeing the symbols as they are for real life you know like the yeah. real life emotion of it you're, you're sometimes then just relating it to the fan quality of well this is the spirits and the da 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 right, you know, right, and right. I, I, I like to divorce it of all that because what really yeah. interests me in this movie is the real human emotions that are behind everything right. exactly. I want to strip the right. fan right. boy shit out of it exactly you know? that's the, what I was trying to say it's like when, yeah. when someone is committing violence there are so many dynamics to what that's a lot of times those people were victimized too when yeah, they were sure. younger. And, sure. and his yeah. character, he says it at some point when he was young, was visited and, and he yeah. things were done That's to right. him. So it's like the cycle. The, the cycle, right. the pain. Even the he's shown empathy. He's shown empathy. Shame, yeah. guilt. Yeah. I mean it's that's what yeah. makes it so heartbreaking. It's just a tragedy. Yeah, yeah sure. just a tragedy. It's exactly. just so tragic. All, so all around. That's just so right on the nose. Staring at the clock here, getting nervous. Let's keep moving. So then uh we get to oh, this amazing sequence it's very terrifying of her hong kong uh no it's 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 laura where <laughs> she's in the in the hallways of her house and she's staring at herself uh, in the painting and opening the doors and she's being led mm. into the painting essentially going between traveling in these two dimensions um and uh it, it's just v- very terrifying um we get to the roadhouse let's let, let's get to the roadhouse here because oh, this is the right. next sequence which is just so amazing where 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 uh you know she shows up at the roadhouse she's going to meet with Jacques and this is another side of her mm-hmm. where this is her sort of wild excess you know um this is the dark side of her sexual exploits and we open on this of course beautiful Julie Cruz song mm. very classic Lynch and Angelo firing on all cylinders and this very emotional mm-hmm. scene but then we get to this fucking like the after hour side of Roadhouse of the Roadhouse Right. Where it's mm-hmm. strobe lights, incredible song that like jung jung, yeah. jung big like honky tonk like <laughs> like <laughs> methadone instrumental. Oh yeah, yeah. amazing song. <laughs> the yeah. bass line and, and yeah, the like cello. It's like cello or something. Like bowed, that. yeah. <laughs> so cool very very cool and it goes on for a very yeah yeah, it goes on for a very long time to where it it feels hypnotic as you mentioned earlier tom Mm -hmm. before we recorded and Mm -hmm. i love the touch uh again haven't really seen it that much utilized where he again mixing the sound of the band to be as loud as you it would be in that room and let's subtitle everyone's dialogue Mm -hmm. realistic yeah it feels like you're in that room Yeah, mm-hmm. and, yeah and, and, and 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 the subtitle, the dialogue, great touch. Um, it, it lets the music almost feel... no one does sound as good as Lynch. No, you know, like no, no, no. I don't think people consider it as much as he does. And there's a lot no. going on. He always says, he always says, fifty uh, percent of movies is sound. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But a lot of times people treat it as like fifteen percent. Yeah, I know it's crazy, mm-hmm. crazy. And, what, and you know, like you you can't hear what they're saying. Like, yeah, it totally puts you in that place, and you feel right. like you're fucking getting roofied. Like it feels mm-hmm. like that's happening. Yeah, you know, like he gives that sensation because it plays out so long. You mm-hmm. live there for a while. Yeah, it's really. And then Donna, of course, is seeing this side of Laura for the first time. And we're, we're, we're kind of living out like all the different secrets, the different sides and, and Donna's kind of heartbroken. I mean, in the moment, of course we see her drinking and you know, she gets drugged and all She's that. She's drugged. Yeah. And then Laura sees, you know, the jacket and it's like, don't become me. Don't. And like, yeah, she right. sees that innocence and she's right. so, bereft that her innocence was taken and so it's like she's so protective of donna and i i love that moment where laura switches like yeah, that. don't get Anna. lost like i am yeah. exactly mm-hmm. exactly yeah and it's and it's like it's also just fu- not funny i'm not going to say it's funny but it's just like you know a, a character like jacques you know that these that these girls are hanging out with too it's just like what the fuck you know and they're jacques, teenagers mm-hmm. by the way we can't forget these are yeah, like teenagers of yeah of course in high school gross like 40 year old guys you know? yeah <laughs> and then Canadians. you have yeah and then you have uh and what's canadians yes. <laughs> <laughs> right you hosers and then you have um What's her name? Uh, help me. Ronette Polanski. Ronette Polanski or Pulaski Polanski, who is of yeah. course Pulaski. seen wandering the bridge in the in the mm-hmm. in the. In well, the that's the dead girl. Uh, Banks. Uh, 
Teresa no, Banks and they were the, doing the dead character together. in the beginning. Yeah. 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 And she's, and sorry, Marcus. Well, it's not, but yeah, they're yeah, two different characters, not. Teresa no. and Ronette. Oh, no. Yeah. But they're all kind of mixed. Okay. They are, there's a scene where oh. they all know each other. Yeah. yeah. They all like, know each oh, other. Okay. Ronette's yeah. in the Ronette, beginning of the. Ronette and Laura were doing like nude pictures together. In the oh, series. Part of the, the prostitution. Ronette's, yeah. At one eye like Jackson's. Well. Walking the track, train tracks naked or something in the very, in the, like the. Yeah. Yep. Pilot, she's there. <laughs> she's there when Laura dies. She's there yeah, when Laura gets murdered. She was the only witness to Laura's murder. She survived. She's mute because she's traumatized. She's got it. Okay. Okay. So, okay. Um, yeah, just incredible set piece. Does anybody have anything to say about that piece before we before we move on? I mean, that roadhouse scene is just so iconic. Yeah, it's insane. Then we get to another just like, I think this is an all-time Lynch scene for me, is mm-hmm. the one-armed man honking sequence. Honk, honk, dude. I agree yeah. with you. Oh, <laughs> for Top sure. five Lynch. It's awesome. It's awesome. Brilliant. Yeah. yeah. That actually might because be fun. The sheer cacophony Ugh. of what's yeah. happening in the but, editing. But it's like, it's yes. like you know, you know, in the very beginning of Blue Velvet, when you see the old man, he's like watering the lawn, yeah. and he starts having a stroke, and yeah. like he's pulling at his uh, uh, twisted around um, uh, like, like garden uh, hose, hose. Yeah. yeah, and like that hose is representing like you know like his, his arteries artery. clogging kind of thing, like, and it's like he does these great visual manifestations of like states of being yeah. yes. and this state yeah. of being and, and all that honking is just absolute pure, not quite dread, not anger, but just like like. Frustr- like uh, un un uh, a frustration that can't go anywhere so it's just like 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 radiating and like you're just ex- yeah. shouting it out and it's not but it's not gratifying and satisfying it's also it's pure frustration right help me out guys it's yeah. also Something. terror yeah. too it's also terror because you know the one our man is literally shouting at Laura saying it's your father right, it's, right. Your father. it's your father it's your father And, yeah, right. and, and oh yeah like oh. okay we're gonna use like relentless honking horns and revving engines but what else will make this more insane oh yeah let's intercut barking dogs you yeah, know, yeah. And, like, oh, dude, yeah totally you know right. like why and, and not yeah. this the black dog her, runs at night though yes. oh yeah right there you go. right but i think this is also cool in when we look at the progression uh from her having the realization where she comes yes. out of the dissociative denial state yeah. and she's mm-hmm. finally able to like put those pieces oh, together. And then from that? then on, we see this unraveling Can of I... when she's finally confronting him, seeing her father oh. for who he is. And once that denial mm-hmm. sort of dissolves, that's mm-hmm. when she knows like all hope it's is over. lost. And you know what I was trying what, to yeah. say? It, it's like horrible feelings between yeah. Both of them, they're having horrible feelings individually, and they're not are um, communicating. That's all. Maybe I was trying to say there was a frustration in the communication isn't there because they're individually, separately exploding yes. with dark emotions Definitely. Mm-hmm. and you conflicting, mean? conflicting emotions. Yeah, right, right. Yeah. They're very it's, different. But. It's like she, she's. That's also interesting. Like the way she's saying, like dad, dad, like. There's something in her face where it yeah. feels like that's her dad. Like she really? does have this connection. That's her dad. And then <laughs> part awful. of her is thinking like fucking hell. Like this is like, yeah. you know, it's, and, so it's, it's and, that and, conflict. that dis- And him too. He's like my daughter. You my know? daughter. Yeah. yeah. yeah and, you know? and, and fucked up. And th- this is, Sorry. this is seriously some of the darkest shit ever because again, is what you were saying is after this honking scene, you know, there's that moment where she confronts him and it's very intense. And, as that you know, as you were saying, the denial fades. It again flashes back to the murder of Teresa Banks right there, which is yeah. fucking extremely dark. And and but th- this is what sets everything in motion now. Where you know we're seeing now a different Laura because you know she is n- now with this realization and that he knows what she knows and she's yeah. accepted and come to terms with it. Right. She's exactly. marked. For, she's marked for death. I the mean, the angel has. Gone away. Angels yeah. gone away. And, yes, sorry, Marcus. Like right out of the painting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, yeah, painting. yeah right. visual right. representation. Because I, yeah. we, I also wanted to talk about when she's when Bob is coming. I, we forgot that scene. So it's sorry, right here. Marcus, it's right here. Um, okay. I want, it comes right now. I, I just want to get to it because it's super important. Clock is stressing me out. So now we're getting into the 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 scene, which is maybe the darkest moment in the movie, which is you know Leland slash Bob's ritual. Okay. He drugs the mom, you know, that's a little fucking too real. Uh, of course, then she, you know, is being drugged by him, sees the white horse. That's very, you know, disturbing. 
And then we see Leland turn on the fan. And that's yeah. why that image has so much significance in the series and in this film is that, you know, that fan signifies, you know, he, you know, he's coming into the room, you know, that's so when very, she hears that fan. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There's something to do with like, on the fanboy side too. There's something to do with like electricity and like yeah. how these beings like, sure. uh, you know, travel or whatever, yeah. where they come from. But it's also like that thing when you're younger and there are those weird things in your childhood home where you have these like sort of strange memories. And yes. if they have a negative association, right. yeah. it just sticks with you. And I feel like it's right. that, imagining that every time he comes into her room, she doesn't know when it's going to happen. Some nights he doesn't, some nights she does. So she's Mm -hmm. waiting there in the bed and she hears that fan as if to drown Mm -hmm. out the sound, right? Crazy. Mm -hmm. And then when- And also be hypnotized by it kind of. Yeah. It it is like a hypnosis. Staring at it, you know? Yeah, because she is in a trance. Right, right. And because it is this drugged out trance of dissociation that she goes into, the arousal stuff is also very disturbing because, I mean, that's also a part of sexual abuse. There's a combination between repulsion, involuntary arousal, the confusion that happens when sexual abuse is your first experience of sex. And that's part of why her behavior is the way it is in terms of promiscuity and attachment issues and all all of it. And just what your feelings are yeah. psychologically so right. it's all right there in that moment you see and then finally she looks in his face and, sees and that it's, it's her dad it's her not dad. bob it's dad it's, her it's dad, dad yeah. and that's horrible and you know like we said now that that illusion has been broken again lynch finds another way to make this just so much more depressing but also authentic which is now we see this this, this moment of laura as she's having these dizzying moments in class oh, and it's yeah. a great oh, little so set good. piece of all the dissolves yeah. of the clocks and just like the time what is time now in school yeah. and mm-hmm. we're, we're 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 dissociated we're out reality's of, unraveling it's, it's unraveling from right this. and exactly. then it gets very dark and tragic because we see the angels fading away from the picture and that kind of signifies like i was saying she's marked for death you know like no one's going to protect her she knows too much bob's gonna you know want to take her out so then we get to fuck guys here we are the train scene which is just this absolute haunted house of horror set piece of just relentless i've been to that train car before Holy okay, shit. God. I've been to Snoqualmie, uh, you know, on tour with <laughs> the band and you saw the falls, you know, yeah. and oh then you can, at that point you could go to the train car still. So yeah. <laughs> Tom, like you were saying with the flashlight when they're like, oh my God. And yeah, like, that's a great image. The, um, like he's kind of like, uh, like, like, like animals treating them like yeah like, like uh, pets. Yeah. And, but, and their faces are grotesque with like bloody the, mouths, but then yeah. like, it's just very, oh. very, not crude, but very sim- simple filmmaking with like flashing, uh, wildly, all these flashlights on their faces, mm-hmm. such great Madness. visual art. Oh, know? my God. And it then Ron, Ronette, too, it's so sad when, yeah. when they're in there and she's tied up and Ronette says, like, look at me. Like, don't look at him. Like, she's trying to, like, protect mm-hmm. her. And it's just so heartbreaking. And, and then her dad says to her, like, I thought you always knew it was me. I always thought you knew it was me. Look at me. Oh. And he yeah, didn't know that she didn't, she couldn't process it. Mm. And then like, and then what Ronette an doesn't, asshole. it's so fucked yeah. up. Like, really yeah, that scene, up. every time I cry, I can't take it. He needs to die. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's really bad. Yeah. It's, End the movie with him getting died. Yeah. <laughs> you know, come on, David. Oh well, like his, cur- his soul is cursed. He's in the black His lodge, soul is you know? cursed. <laughs> but I want him to like not be alive. Yeah. So, no, but, and, and then yeah. we have the well, red room, right? Well, we no, well, so, well, just real quick. It's like, you know, okay. just to touch on the filmmaking of the scene, it's so well executed in that, you know, again, the contrast between this sort of angelic operatic music with the horror, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. very uniquely Lynch. Um, and then, like yeah. you know, this operatic music begins to rise as like the stabbing, All the blue is, light, the mm. blue light with the stabbing that's occurring, and it's just, it's just, it's just, it's just, it becomes so cosmically, overwhelmingly tragic yes. that um, it's really transcendental. I mean, it really does it reach is. this. The, it, it, when you see it on the big screen, that's what I was gonna say. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah that's. The, I remember. I'll never forget. Every time I see it, it's just like, and it's great to see. And like I said, a beat up print kind of. Yeah. Because it, um, <sighs> it just you feel the filmness of it, and um, it's it's about as powerful as anything you'll ever see in a movie. It, it is. Feels like 15 minutes of the screaming, you know, yeah. and like your yeah. like scream therapy or like you know, yeah. some kind of hardcore album or something, you know, or like tops any of that stuff. You right. Know, it's, yeah. It's super and this is that operatic moment 
moment, like you were saying, Evan, when we talked about like earlier, like what to get to that moment of extreme, like yeah. a father brutally murdering his daughter, like it, yeah, it, yeah. it, it does feel like it's, it's transcending yeah. it's something that's so extreme. Yeah. Well, then she starts when she's on the other side, she just has uh, like a smile. She can't. Yeah. Pop, and she has you know, agent down. Cooper and it's like, finally, like she has this, right comfort that she never that's his had. angel that's her, her angel her yeah. angel and like yeah. she her life was doomed like like at, yeah. once she realized now she's at her, peace th- yeah and her father was doing that to her when she actually confronted it like she realized it was it was there was too much pain and like garb and bozia i want my garb and bozia you know pain and sorrow like there was too much and then to see her like smiling, it's just, it's so heartbreaking. Yeah. Uncontrollably mm. smiling. She's a piece. And laughing. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. And so it is a weird, happy ending in a way. Yeah. It is weird that like Cooper is the person she gets paired with. I mean, there's like, that's when you have to know the events of Twin Peaks yeah. and stuff, I guess. Like that he's in the lodge with her. But yeah. But you know, it's in the context of this movie, he's like, don't take the ring, Laura. Right? Yeah. Like, he's yeah. telling her not to. But the fact that she takes the ring is like what saves her, basically, mm-hmm. saves her soul. Mm-hmm. basically like From she gets pain. killed yeah. but her soul is not uh, not yeah. haunted or like you know, possessed there, by Bob there's something or... about agent cooper like as the ultimate symbol of this like white knight kind of like this savior and maybe like in reality he doesn't exist for her like mm-hmm. but the fact that like she found that comfort even if it's like this metaphysical connection well how about he's a good father yeah totally right. and he believes her and I yeah. think that's something mm. like he validates her. He listens mm-hmm. to her and he mm-hmm. knows that she's telling the truth mm-hmm. and she whispers in his ear yeah. and he, he, you he's know, a pure of heart person. Yeah. yeah. And she he never really that. had that. She never had that. No, in her, never. In her life, so. On earth. No. no. Yeah. So it's like Except that connection. Except maybe D- um, Donna. Right. Who never knew the full truth, you know? Right. And she right. was protecting her from that. Yeah. Um, one, one thing too, is just a quick image again, just one of those like that, you know, when the other agent is underneath the trailer park and it fades, Another just quick shot that's such a crazy touch is that when when you see Leland Palmer in the Black Lodge at the end, and then he's just sort of like floating angularly downwards. Yeah, you know that shot where he's yeah, like next so to good. Bob. That is yeah. like, actually. Can, can I just say my favorite thing is the transition. He's in the woods and there's like a pond or something, and then yeah. suddenly the woods aren't the woods, but they're like the big red curtain. Yes, yeah. that yes. is that's as really as fucking good cool. as Lynch gets for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's totally. incredible. Yeah, and so just this th- this mixture of the crying and the laughing and the music coming to a crescendo. The monkey's the, face. The monkey's face. The angel. Let's not forget the Michael Angelo that's Don't floating that. above. <laughs> Sorry. Don't do that. And, but it, it does just become this next level, kind of that, that same feeling you get in the Silencio sequence. You it know, is. Uh, very yeah. Silencio. Uh, sure. Yes. Of, of Mulholland Drive. And the ring is like the blue key. Sure. Like and he, the last he, shot of he, a he, racer head, too. I will sure. invite for that, sure, that there's yeah. a continuity with him you yeah know? but it's, the, the angel is a classical element but that curtain is a classical element too of like you know people used to think that the cosmos was like that the sky was a big curtain and yeah mm-hmm. Behind, mm-hmm. You know, and so it's like revealing that. something the like, other, like side. other side yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah just yeah. but just I, to put a bow on what i was trying to say real quick is that again it's just like all the lynch elements are coming together they're firing on all cylinders it's a hard art house fucking play here that he's making on all these areas and it's fucking mm. resonating on a deep emotional level, and that is just not fucking easy to do at all. And he's the only to guy that can do it. To express the nature of that pain, I know like that very real metaphorically, pain. It metaphorically, is because it is that level and it abstractly. is that abstract. Like none of these things are ordinary. Like that level of pain is not ordinary. It's and he's transcendent one of, in its own way. It is, and he's one of the only artists I think that's even capable of touching. Agreed. That, you know? Boom. Yeah. So there you maybe go. possession. <laughs> We talked about go. that earlier, but yeah. All right. We did it, guys. <laughs> Let's applaud ourselves. Guys, I'm so fucking impressed we fucking did it. I can't believe Whew. it. Something happened. <laughs> I was scared. And we were... my opinion hasn't changed at all. Okay. No, but, but you know, it's still nice like living in those No, moments. I know. He was, he was betting that it would be my favorite David Lynch film. No, 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 no. no, but, no, no. Straight star. Too much baggage. I, um, but I'm I, I, Evan, yeah, Evan thank story. you for guiding us. Thank yeah, I, I, I just, I, yeah. I, 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 just to be honest, I, I was nervous when we were still talking about David Bowie at 35 minutes in the clock, but we did it. Here we are. Oh, we're uh, fine. That, that we're we fine. Did. That was well, one. There fucking, was the cultural, you know, yeah. Uh, no, I know. I'm fucking show. with you. I know. You know I know. No, I know. 
It's uh, yeah. that was one fucking hour, everybody, on Twin Peaks Fire Walk with me. We did it. 1992. Was, yeah, 1992 is in the 1992. books. I was dreading that all Great fucking year. day, but we did it. We got it in. <laughs> Let's talk about next week. Um, all right, everybody. 1993 time. We are going to be getting into uh, again someone who's very under discussed in uh, as a director on this channel, kind of shamefully in in a lot of ways. Is this I think still? Is this our first of this second, person's film? Second, second. We did we did three one. women. Yeah, right. Sorry. Right. Right. So we're getting into a, a Robert Altman film. We're getting back to the Robert Altman well here for 1993. You guessed it. We're doing one fucking hour on shortcuts. Which Tom <laughs> mentioned earlier. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I've never seen it. But Tom's it's never like seen Huey, it. Is Huey Lewis in it? Uh, no, I think Lyle, Lyle, Lyle Lovett. Lyle Lovett. Lyle Lovett. I think, Huey, I think Lewis. Huey Lewis is also in it. Oh, uh, maybe. Huey Lewis in the news. I don't know. I've never guys, seen it. Well, either that be... or the Pelican Brief, right? Yeah, Huey exactly. Lewis. This is a stunt. Uh, I've never seen this. We're betting it. that I'll love it. You guys and everyone I've ever talked to it's a, the perf- is a big fan. Yeah. It's like very revered. I just haven't seen it. I love Altman. So and Raymond Carver, LA, Raymond Carver, it's all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. and, and yeah. it's big LA movie. And I think what'll be interesting like to that. see what yeah. Tom yeah. thinks is you know we we spend so much time on this channel, you know, talking about our our, our hate of Magnolia, our love of Boogie Nights. <laughs> right. Oh, and yeah. it's it's going to be very interesting for you to sort of see what the archetype yeah. model uh, for these right. movies are. This is where is, those movies came from. This is where they came from. Right. Yeah, that you is know? interesting. This yeah. is where it's weird that I never saw that. Yeah. This and, is. Uh, the, yeah. Okay. So, and we're going to visit ninety three. That's uh, Enter the Wu Tang. Yeah. Oh. That's <laughs> that's where we get the Wu Tang Clan. Ninety three guys. Oh, I don't know what else. Yeah. I don't know anything else about ninety three. Yeah. Dude, yeah. That's yeah. pretty much <laughs> it. Man, the only thing that, that for me, the nineties are kind of over by ninety four. <laughs> yeah, but ninety three is there nothing else? Kurt's still alive. Kurt's yes. still uh, hanging in there, but just uh, barely, uh, right? No, he's yeah, all right. he's, he's still in there. hanging in there. Well, he has that second album, right? In Euro's ninety three. In Euro's ninety three. Right. I think so. So is that it? Oh, yeah. 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 ninety four. When's left oh, ninety four? It came we out right were, when he, he died. Oh. Yeah. Ninety four. Okay. Trying to think what else was in ninety three. Any ninety three? Uh, I don't know. Clinton's Clinton's happening. Clinton's uh, yeah. Happening. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll have I mean, to we'll have to research maybe a couple of things that happened in nineteen ninety three. I, I think it'd be like cute to do like five <laughs> five tidbits. Like like if you know the okay. before a movie plays. Yeah, like that's a cool. trivia. Sure. Yeah. You know, like, sure. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. I'm trying to think. What was the song of the? What was the? What was the album of the year? Can Probably like that Whit- quick? Whitney Houston. You know, uh, I know Mariah Carey. <laughs> well, oh like, my yeah. god! Well, the bre- it's like straight up, you know, the Breeders. You know, Whoop, mm-hmm. there it is. Whoop, there you know, it Whoop, is. You know, Cannonball. No, Linger like, by the Cranberries. Oh, I mean, like, I mean, like uh, the, what's the what's the biggest album? Well, like, uh, like album wouldn't it be Nirvana? Song. Like, wouldn't it be like? Because it was kind of in that era where. What you was know, like the pop like, song? In Utero was big, but not quite the hi- hottest. Um, Pearl Jam's going strong. Oh, yeah. boy. Stymie's like dream, was, guys. Rock think, is kind of like what about completely Ork? dominating in this period, right? And it's well, like, hip hop's yeah. really. No, hip hop's huge, strong. too. Yeah, well, it's getting going. But I mean, like, compared to like the Backstreet Boys, that kind of thing hasn't started. Oh, like, well, no. That's no, like no. New Kids in the Block no. died. Like and they, you know. But I know, but there was a period where boy bands were happening before this, too, you know? Yeah, so 93, um, I mean, well, we'll research it for the show. We're still on 92 here. We're going to get no, it. I'm just saying, like, like uh, let's get ready. Let's do trivia. A little Ooh, like, meatloaf. Like, I'll do anything for love. Oh, oh my God. Dude, now we're talking. <laughs> no, I can top that. Get a grip. Aerosmith. I was just say Aerosmith. Right, it was like, right. was, there was a lot like, of Aerosmith. Uh, like crying crazy. Crying crazy. 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 Amazing. crazy. Amazing. That's amazing. what I was just crazy. thinking. Crying. All that shit. Oh, my God. Every okay, day well, I, I love that shit on MTV. Well, that's the, that's oh. how, let's put a nine, an early 90s song. This is uh, Shop Talk. This should be off the air. <laughs> yeah, let's, let's, let's replace the, 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 um, the theme song for these episodes oh. and play like one of our favorite 93 songs. Okay. Oh, okay. Settle I'm down. Just out there. Copyright Charlie uh, over here. I'm trying to okay. Look okay. Um, all right. Yeah. All right. Well, the so, MIDI version. The, okay. The eight bit version. Okay. 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 <laughs> all right. So forget it. Never mind. The show, I'm drunk. The show is slowly disintegrating <laughs> here. But okay. So we have shortcuts for next week. Everybody, uh, get, get excited for Woo! that. It's a three hour film. Watch, watch that. It's a three hour film. So if you haven't seen it, um, strap in. Start watching it now. Yeah. Start watching <laughs> oh it right God. now. Um, Yikes. It's it's it is it is a good time though. 
Um, so we'll, so we'll get into that. You, get, you had me with it's an LA movie. That's that, that's one of the coolest Ooh. parts. That's of it. cool because it's the undiscovered LA. It's like the real LA. Yeah, it's cool. It is. Chris Penn, you're, you're gonna love it. Robert um, Downey is awesome. It's just great little character. Oh, the cast okay. is on fire. Yeah. yeah, rock on, rock on. So shortcuts. We'll see what Tom thinks. Uh, in the meantime, uh, definitely get on the Patreon. patreoncom slash one fucking hour. Just five bucks a month. Guys, you're not going to want to miss us playing the blockbuster game, are you? No, you so, don't. <laughs> <laughs> that's how we're going to celebrate 93, right? I can't wait. I know. I can't wait. I can't wait to see who wins. I'm very excited. Oh, my so, God. That's yeah. Either crazy. get on the Patreon, sign up to, to watch us play uh, a couple rounds of that, uh, or uh, you can uh, click the join button underneath this YouTube video and become a mm-hmm. moment that way to watch it as well. Also, the one fucking hour tea is uh, going strong. <laughs> oh shit, you gotta get one of those. <laughs> yeah, you gotta get one fucking hour tea. Uh, that is, of course, is in the link in the description of this video or in the link in the description on the podcast. It's available to order limited sizes. I think I'm we're out of mediums now, so you're shit out of luck for oh, mediums. Shit. Oh, but uh, yeah, so triple uh, XL. We we got extra <laughs> extra smalls left, and that's it. <laughs> right. So right. Um, all right, got, Huey Lewis yeah. was in um, the shortcuts. Was in, Okay. Oh wow! God, I don't remember that. I don't yeah, remember. So three hours of fly. You had like me at Huey shots. Lewis. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, okay, everybody. Okay. Well, right, I, a lot's going to compete with this. Of course, we can't leave you without your moment of zen. All right, everybody. Have a good rest of your week, and we will talk to you soon. All right, see you later. Bye. 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 Frank Silva was the set decorator, and we were shooting in Laura Palmer's bedroom. And Frank was uh, moving furniture around, and somebody said, a woman said, Frank, don't lock yourself in that room, because he had just moved a chest of drawers in front of the door. And I wasn't even looking in that direction, but the image of Frank locked in that room popped into my head. And I rushed to Frank, and I said, Frank, are you an actor? And he said, why, I happen to, yes, happen to be. And I said, you're going to be in this movie. And he said, fantastic. And so I had Frank hide on one pan shot across Laura Palmer's bedroom, freeze down by the bars of the bed, and just be looking right at the camera. And we shot that. And I didn't know what I was going to use it for, no idea at all. We kept shooting in Laura Palmer's house, and that night we were shooting one of the last things, the last thing in the house. Mrs. Palmer's uh, tormented on the couch, smoking a cigarette, and scenes are playing back in her head, and suddenly she sees something in her mind, bolts upright, and screams. Sean Doyle, he got that right, and it tilts up and captures the scream perfectly. And I said, fantastic. And Sean says, no, it's not fantastic. I said, Sean, what is the matter? He said, someone was reflected in the mirror. I said, who was reflected in the mirror? And he said, Frank Silva was reflected in the mirror. And that's when I knew that Frank was part of the scene. Motherfucking goddamn orange peel beef. That was wicked, man. <laughs>